the next lecture will be on the topic diversity and inclusion. Are they the same? This lecture will be delivered by Professor Lailani Alcantara, Dean of the College of International Management at APU. Dean Alcantara will join us shortly. All right, hello everyone. My name is Leilani Alcantara. I'm the Dean of the College of International Management and I'm very happy to deliver a Mac lecture on the theme diversity and inclusion, are they the same? So this is a mock lecture and the learning objectives that I have for you today are first to define diversity and to differentiate diversity from inclusion. So from this learning objectives, now I think you know the answer to the question, diversity and inclusion, are they the same? The answer is they're not the same. And we're going to discuss today how are they different from each other. And before we go to the definition of diversity, first I would, I would like to invite you to reflect on your best teamwork experience so far and think what made this team experience the best for you. And I would go back to this question again later at the end of my mock lecture. And I'm going to use the simple model of team effectiveness to define diversity and inclusion. So according to this model of team effectiveness, effectiveness, team effectiveness is determined by the following three factors that include context, composition, and process. Context refers to those situational factors that teams are currently in. This could include the resources they have. Well, we all know that organizations have their resources, and teams would have to function given those resources organizations have. So how they would perform would de determine uh, on how much resources they have. And it could also, the context could also be defined by the leadership structure of an organization. And another factor that could affect team effectiveness is what we call composition. And composition would refer to who the members are and what constitute the team. While process would refer to those factors that determine how the teams would perform and achieve the goals and objectives they have set for the, for the team. And so using this um, simple model of team effectiveness, Diversity would then be included in composition because diversity would define who the members are in the team. And we simply define diversity as the degree to which members of the group are similar to or different from one another. And to further elaborate to you what diversity means is, I would like to use this image of iceberg. I've seen only images of iceberg, but I haven't seen a real one. But um, I think many of us only see the tip of the iceberg, right? But underneath it, we don't know how huge an iceberg is. And it's the same with diversity. Diversity can be categorized into two ways. First is surface level diversity. And surface level diversity would refer to the dimensions of diversity that we can easily observe. That by looking at the members of the team or our organization, we would know how diverse they are. And surface level diversity would include factors such as gender, race, nationality. And those are just examples of surface level diversity. And another type of diversity that I would like to emphasize today is what we call deep level diversity. And this kind of diversity cannot be seen easily. They are unobservable. You need time to know about deep level diversity. And deep level diversity also would then define how different the teams are. And actually this type of diversity would actually be the driving factors for members of the team to know how similar they are once they get to know each other. And the factors that would be included in deep level diversity would include personality, work preferences, lifestyle, values, attitudes, belief. And those are the factors that we all know that you cannot just easily observe. 
But these factors would determine to what extent teams and organizations are diverse. And so by knowing that these two types of diversity, I think it's just easy for us to understand that diversity exists anywhere. It exists in any societies and in any organizations. And it's very important for us to understand these two types of diversity. So even though people or members of the team would look similar, or they're coming from the same race, they can still be different, they can still be diverse. At the same time, even though people look different, they would still share similarities once they get to know each other. And so, since diversity exists in any societies and in any organizations, scholars and practitioners have been very much interested in knowing how the diversity affects performance. And so many studies, many research have been done on this topic, trying to examine how diversity impacts performance. But the results have been mixed. Some studies have found that there are positive effects of diversity on creativity and innovation or performance in general. Well, some studies also have found that there are negative effects on commitment, identification, engagement, and performance of teams and organizations. Well, some studies have found that, there's, that diversity also increase, increases turnover in teams and organizations. On the other hand, some studies also pointed out that it doesn't matter, that there's no effect on performance, that diversity does not lead to any effect on performance. And this is study that I'm, um, I'm showing on the slide to you today is a, is a supportive finding on the positive effect of diversity on performance. This study has compared two types of organization. One type of organization that is led by, their, by a very, by a diversity, by a team that is high in diversity, and another type of organization that is led by a leadership team that is low in um, diversity. So different levels of diversity. And what they found is that those organizations or companies that are led by diverse leadership team perform better, that they are able to leverage benefits more from their innovation. They, they're able to report 45% increase in their revenue compared to organizations that are led by less diverse leadership team. So given this um, positive, potential positive effect on diversity, perhaps instead of just asking the question, how does diversity affect performance? It would be very more important for us to uh, answer the question, how can we leverage the benefits of diversity? So studies have also been conducted on this theme of finding out how can we transform diversity into benefits, into positive advantage, or into power, into power of organizations. And this is where the differentiation between diversity and inclusion come in, comes in. Diversity is not equal to inclusion. It's not the same. I used this model earlier to define um, diversity, and I'm going to use the same model to define inclusion. So if diversity defines the composition of the team, inclusion would define the process that involves or that affects team effectiveness. And I would like to define inclusion here as a process fostering a sense of belongingness, value, and respect for individuals. So when inclusion becomes a process of the team, members feel that they belong to their team and that they're being respected by team members and they're being valued for who they are, for the differences they have, for the uniqueness that they contribute to their team. And this is a very um, popular phrase that is used to differentiate diversity from inclusion. Diversity is being invited to, a to the party Inclusion is being asked to dance. And actually, we can go beyond asking someone to dance when we think about inclusion. We could even ask individuals to help us design how the party would look like. What kind of songs are we going to play? 
how long the party would be. The bottom line is that we make everyone involved in the process, and they make them feel part of the team, and they make, we make them feel respected for who they are. And so this table just summarizes what we have discussed so far. The diversity is a trait that would define who the members of the teams are, while inclusion is a process that would define how well the team would perform and how the team members are building relationship with each other. Diversity refers to the membership, while inclusion refers to engagement. And we could also, also say that inclusion, the outcome that we could achieve through inclusion would be engagement. But what do we mean by engagement? Let me just describe to you what an engaged individual or engaged per person would be. So an engaged person, an engaged individual would be someone who is very passionate about their work, who would take initiatives so that things would go well because they simply care that things would go well. Their work defines who they are. They identify themselves with their work. They feel passionate about their work. So you could actually easily also recognize those people who are highly engaged in their work because they're energized. They're energized and they receive energy from everyone at work. And they're very passionate about their work. So this question that I asked you in the beginning, and I invited you to reflect on your best teamwork experience so far, and what made this team experience the best. Now I would like you to ask, to ask you the question, did you experience inclusion in this team? And perhaps some of you would answer yes. In this best team experience so far, I felt that I belonged. I felt that I was respected by my team members. I felt that I was valued by, by my team members for who I am and for how I have contributed to the team. And so this figure summarizes actually the outcomes or the results of a research I, I conducted. I also researched actually about the topics of inclusion and I have interviewed 50 plus individuals asking about how they have experienced inclusion and exclusion so far. And here I have listed the findings I have about the experiences of inclusion, like how inclusion has impacted individuals at work. And as you can see here, it includes high motivation, high engagement, sense of fulfillment, high satisfaction, creativity and innovation, psychological safety, and growth mindset. So by looking at this list of impacts of inclusion, I think it would just make sense for organizations to continuously strive for inclusion because it does have a lot of benefits, not only at the individual level, but also at the organizational level. And so these are the learning objectives that I have set in the beginning. And I would also invite you then to check whether you have achieved this learning objectives by the end of this lecture. That by now, you'll be able to define what diversity is, and also you would be able to differentiate diversity from inclusion. Thank you very much.